be in this place as we worship and magnify the name of our God. Amen. Let me take this moment to thank all of you for joining us for our in-person post Sunday worship celebration. And those of you who join us by way of Facebook Live, Amen, and YouTube, we praise God and we honor God for you. Sister Faith Moton is our worship leader and she will come and lead us in worship. Let us stand. Praise God for one more blessing.
over each and every person. Thank you for keeping us safe during this time of need. We ask that you bless each household represented by members. Bless the sick and shut in. Bless our pastor. Thank you for bringing us safety this far through the pandemic. Amen. 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 Responsibly. 
The book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Please stand when you have found the verse. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And Jesus landed and saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to the king, said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples did just go back to the of the broken pieces that were left over.
the June 19, 1865 announcement of the abolition of slavery in the U.S. state of Texas, and more generally, the emancipation of enslaved African Americans throughout the former Confederate states. Its name is a blend of June and 19, the date of its celebration. During the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on September the 22nd, 1862, with an effective date of January the 1st, 1863. It declared that all enslaved persons in the Confederate States of America in rebellion and not in the Union hands were to be freed. However, news of the end of slavery did not travel to certain areas of the United States for more than two years afterward. On June 18, 1865, Union Army General Gordon Granger arrived at Galveston Island, Texas with 2,000 federal troops, many who were black soldiers who had fought in the Union Army, to occupy the state on behalf of the federal government. The following day, Granger read aloud the contents of General Order No. 3, announcing the total emancipation of those held as slaves and this is the order. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that, that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen were advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. Formerly enslaved people in Galveston rejoiced in the streets after the announcement and the following year, freedmen organized the first of what became the annual celebration of Juneteenth in Texas. In the years afterward, however, many struggled to work through the changes against resistance of whites. In the early 20th century, economic and political forces led to a decline in Juneteenth celebrations. This included the passing of new constitutions and amendments. Jim Crow laws and the Great Depression, which forced many black people off farms and into the cities to find work. Since the 1980s and 1990s, the holiday was more widely celebrated among African American communities. And in 1980, Texas was the first state to establish Juneteenth as a state holiday under its state legislation. By 2008, nearly half of US states observed the holiday as a ceremonial observance. But look at God. On Thursday, June 17th, yes. 2021, yes. President Joe Biden signed a bill establishing Juneteenth, the day commemorating the end of slavery in the United States as a federal holiday. It has been 156 years since slaves in Texas were informed that they were free. The last state in America that gave states their freedom today Juneteenth is now receiving the recognition that it so long deserved. We celebrate Juneteenth as a people because if not one of us is free, none of us are free. This is your moment in black history. We 
We have some play cards that the NAACP has graciously donated to us, and you can receive them on your way out. The um, ushers um, have them in the back of the church. So please be, feel free to take one. And also the Department of Christian Education here at Allen Chapel, we're putting together um, information talking about our African-American trailblazers, both nationally and locally, and you'll hear from us at a later date with that. Sister Slater, and that's wonderful, that kiss you. 
And one of the things that we are attempting to do here at Ireland is to make sure that we are teaching our young people their history because they're not learning a lot of these things in public schools. So it becomes our responsibility to make sure that we are teaching our young people every moment. So every month, amen, on a Sunday, all of that, we will be able to share a moment in black history. And we praise God for the leadership of our Director of Christian Education, Sister Sandra Jones. Now, beloved, let me ask you today uh, to uh, remember to pray for Sister Pam Hamlin, who is out of the hospital. She's at home recovering. She needs our prayers and certainly our support. Also continue to pray for Sister Bonita Manjin, amen, who needs our prayers. Brother Mike Jackson, who has surgery on Thursday, uh, needs our prayers today. And also continue to pray for Sister Sydney Wright, who's also recovering from surgery. Uh, we are always proud of our young people as they participate uh, in the community, participate in the life of the church. And this past week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, a lot of our young people participated in the dynamic Daytona Beach District Christian Education and Bible Discovery Convention. And we were proud of our young people Amen. because they were church well. And uh, Sister Jackie Brown was kind to share some information uh, uh, that, that our young people participated in. One, Amen. Elijah Robinson. Amen. Uh, I think this is the poster contest in his age group. Elijah Robinson won first place. Amen. Amen. And Nehemiah O'Bara won second place. Amen. And then Aiden McDuffie, who didn't want to do the welcome today, amen, in his age group, he got first place. Amen. And then Sister Chandler Morris in our age group, she got first place. Amen. And then Sister Kirsten Morris, who participated in the ESSA contest, got second place in the ESSA contest. And then Sister Sydney Wright, of course, you know that she graduated from Mainland High School with honors. And she received a scholarship from the Dynamic Daytona Beach District, which is called the Aketo Ma Scholarship for $1,000. Amen. So we are proud of our young people as they continue amen, to participate and serve in the life of our church. Now, next Sunday is first Sunday of worship and sacrament. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing all of you in worship. And just in case you're not able to come to church because of health issues or other reasons, you can pick up your pre-field or communion elements here at the church, Tuesday through Thursday from 10 until 2 p.m. We want to make sure that everybody can participate in our worship and sacrament on next Sunday. Now we are preparing for our Men's Day celebration, which is coming up in August. And we praise God for the leadership of Brother Dan Freeman, Brother Christopher Morris. Amen. We'll provide leadership as co-chairs. And like we always do it, amen, before we do anything, we want to have a kick-off prayer service. And this will be on next Friday, July the 2nd. And it will be, what time is that, Brother Freeman? 6 p.m. and that will be on Zoom. You should be able to receive that information from Sister Tiki Baka so you can be able to share in our kickoff prayer service. Uh, we are always blessed here at Allen Chapel to have families and members who are always mindful and very supportive of our church. And we praise God for the Presley family. Amen. As they honor, amen, the late Mrs. Arma K. Presley. Amen. And they give a donation of $200 to the church today. And we praise God for them. Come, why don't you show your love to them and today for their support in the work and ministry of Island Chapel. Now, let me just recognize do we have any guests who are here today for the first time? Any guests and visitors who are shared with us for the first time? I see one standing. If you stand up, everyone. 
Yes, sir. Can you tell us who you are? Brother Will Williams. Brother Will Williams. Yes, Amen. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Society, uh, they shared in the Ageless uh, Dream Girls program, and uh, and three of our members, amen, were recognized at that service, and that was Sister Ruthine Davis, amen, Sister Hortense Cheetah, and Sister Dor Dorothy Mitchell, and I see Sister Dorothy Mitchell sitting back there, amen. Come on, put your hands together for them. <laughs> Beloved, whenever we gather together in the house of the Lord, we do not come empty-handed in the presence of our God. God has been good to us. God has blessed us. And so we don't mind giving back to God what truly belongs to Him. And how many of you know here today that whatever it is that we have, God gave it to us. That job that you have, God made a way for you. That income that you have. God made a way for you. And so God is asking us just to give back to him what truly belongs to him. In the life of Allah Chapel, we share with our tithes, our public offering, our face seed offering. Amen. And we encourage you today that you will share in our time of giving. You can go to Givelify, amen, and share with your gifts. Or you can go to Push Pay, amen, and share with your gifts. Or you can text to give. Amen. And since we are in the house of the Lord, amen, you can get your envelope, amen, and still be able to share in your giving. And we will ask that you will drop off those envelopes or your cash on your way out. Our stewards will be standing at the exits, and you'll be able to share with your gifts today. The Bible declares that give and it shall be given back unto you. In good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over with men and women. Give unto you. I am a living witness that God will bless you beyond the measure, that God will make a way for you. So, right where you are, amen. Won't you join with me in our prayer as we give thanks for the joy we've given? Father God, we thank you and we praise your name for this day. Thank you for this moment of giving. God, we realize that everything that we have, you give it to us. And so, God, we are giving back to you what truly belongs to you. Bless every giver today. God, we pray for the spirit of generosity. That God and your people will give even as you have blessed them. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I present our preacher for today, uh, let, me, let me take this moment. I, I'm always blessed uh, to see our members live a long life. And... Uh, Sister uh, Desmond, Sister Desmond will celebrate 93 years. <laughs> this coming Tuesday. Sister River P. Desmond, she has not been in church, you know, throughout, you know, uh, the pandemic. Uh, she's not been here, but she has been faithfully sending her time in support of the church. Amen. So the members of the family, uh, the Reverend A. Janice Mallory, Sister Kathy Reeves, uh, texted me yesterday, said, Reverend, we, we are... We want to celebrate with our mother and we want to make sure that our congregation can participate in that celebration. So on this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m., amen, those of you who are able to come, you can gather here at Island Chapel in your automobiles, in your vehicles. You can gather here at 1 o'clock on Tuesday and then drive from here to Mrs. Desmo's house, which is uh, only a few minutes from here. Amen. We gather here uh, on, on Tuesday, 
uh, which is the uh, toilet night, amen, at 1 p.m., and we will go by Mrs. Desmos' house at 1.30. So let me encourage all of you that cannot wear that you will be here on a Tuesday and share with this family as we celebrate this uh, uh, River P. Desmo, amen, uh, on our 93rd birthday celebration. It's preaching time. And it's my happy pleasure to present our preacher today, who is really no stranger to us. Uh, he came to Allen Chapel, became a part of Allen Chapel, married, amen, in Allen Chapel, amen, and serving in Allen Chapel. Uh, ever since he has come to Allen Chapel, amen, he has brought passion, amen, to the life of Allen Chapel, excitement to the life of Allen Chapel. He has the zeal, amen, to be able to serve. He has answered the call to serve in the life of uh, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. He is now prepared, preparing to be admitted to the annual conference this year. And I'm proud to be able to say he is my son in the ministry, amen, as he begins this journey. He needs our prayers, he needs our support. As wonderful a preacher as he is, as powerful a preacher as he is, he still needs our prayers. <laughs> After the next selection by the praise team, the next voice you will hear is that of our brother, our friend, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a son-in-law, Dr. Emmanuel Swift. He will bring forth the word. Won't you just put your hands together today as we will see them.
be glad in it. Can we honor the vessel, the hearer and doer of this house, Pastor Dr. Nathan McGullum, for his leadership, his dedication to excellence. And I thank him in advance for just allowing me to come back just another time to give a word and always being dedicated to those that are, are going through the process of learning and molding in the church. So we give honor to you. Let's do, we can do better than that. Let's give a hand to our vessel, our pastor of this house. Amen. Amen. My assignment, and I'm going to be very brief. I, I, my, my wife told me church was only for 30 minutes and we need to get out on time so I'm going to try to be uh, I'm going to discipline myself to that but uh, if I get a little long winded you understand why my assignment is coming from the book of Psalms and we're going to lift up Psalms 23 and when you have Psalms 23 can you stand it is our custom to stand for the reading of God's word so when you have it please step to your feet Psalms 23. Psalms 23. And we will lift up the entirety of Psalms 23 as it pertains the, 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 the word written by David, the shepherd boy. Tell your neighbor, get ready for a shift. It's about to be a shift today. Turn to your neighbor on your left and your right and tell them there's about to be a shift in this place today. Are you excited about what God is getting ready to do? There's a shift. Now, according to the word of David, the Lord is my shepherd and I share my wound. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We shall fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepared a table, here we come. Thy prepared a table in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup is about to run over. Somebody's cup is about to run over in this place today. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in down in thine. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Nelson Mandela was a pioneer who caused a great shift. Nelson Mandela worked very hard to train as a lawyer despite the South African apartheid system, making this very difficult for black men. Against the odds, Nelson Mandela was able to practice law, helping many black South Africans to strive in the apartheid system. When Nelson Mandela was sent to jail for his opposition to the apartheid in the 1960s, there seemed no end in sight to all powerful apartheid system of South Africa. But against all laws, here it goes, there's a shift. Mandela played a critical role in bringing about the end of apartheid and the first truly democratic election. Juneteenth, another shift, marks the day when the federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas in 1865 to take control of the state and ensure that all enslaved people be free. The troops' arrival came a full two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth honors the end to slavery in the United States and is considered the longest running 
African American holiday. Here's the shift. On June 17, 2021, it officially became a federal holiday. The first shall be last. Uh, my, my. And the last shall be first. I decree and declare in this season, no longer shall you be hold back. Who am I preaching to today? No longer shall you be oppressed. No longer shall you carry that dead weight. But I decree and declare that there is a shift that's getting ready to happen for you. My title for today's message is entitled The Shift. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor is getting ready to shift in this place today. It's getting ready to shift in this place today. Everything that you've been through, everything that you go through in this season, God is preparing you for your next level. Level up, you're getting ready to go to your next level. It's not only preparing you for your next level, but it's preparing you for your next dimension. It's not only preparing you for your next dimension, but it's also preparing you for your next realm. Who am I preaching to today? Whenever God gets ready to promote you to another realm, you have to establish your legal right and position to be there. This is where you announce, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up. The everlasting doors and the king, the glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battles. Who am I preaching to today? Whenever a gate or door that he goes in, that means you have permission to go along with him. I'm preaching to somebody today. No matter how many doors the enemy tried to close in your life, I'm here to declare and decree to you today that when God has opened up a door for you, it's, it's your permission and your legal right to walk behind him through it. This is where, this is where we begin to realize God's manifestation power over our lives and we begin to operate in our assignment. I decree and I declare that we will be, that there will be no more demonic or satanic agents disguising themselves as gatekeepers and doorkeepers that seduce you into believing that you can't go through another door. I, I believe that there's some, there's some giant slayers in this house that's going to slay the giant when you get ready to get into the house and to the presence of God. Every door that was closed is getting ready to open. Somebody say it's getting ready to shift in his getting ready to shift. God is calling us to a time such as this. And we've been sitting back for so long worrying about when is the next opportunity or worrying about when is the next job or the meal or the next check is coming through. But I'm here to decree and declare to you this is time now for you to take your rightful place and establish your position in the kingdom of God. God said they told you no last week, but I'm getting ready to open up a door this week when no man, no man in hell, no demonic force is going to be able to shut it up. Who am I preaching to? I decree and declare that your next season is now, that your now is now, and no man can close it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, no man can close what God has assigned. I decree and I declare that you will not be deceived another day in your life. The Bible declare in my father's house there are many mansions and if it were not so I would have not told you but I go to prepare a place for you. He's telling you I go to prepare a place for you in the presence of your enemy. Somebody said it's getting ready to go down at the table in the place where he prepares a table before you. He said I'm going to anoint your head with Yo, fake. 
saved. And I know everybody ain't been saved all their life. There's some car players in the house that know that he's getting ready to set the deck for you in this season. And he's getting ready to bless you in front of your enemies. Who am I preaching to today? Somebody got to watch you eat. Somebody got to watch you drink. Somebody got to watch you pass a check. Somebody got to watch you get promoted. Somebody got to be in the place where God is getting ready to move you from glories to glories. Somebody got to watch you be great. Somebody got to watch you get blessed because you didn't watch long enough. Now is your season. Today is your time. And if you don't have the will, if you have the will in your body to say, I will lift up my hand to the hills for which coming my help. My help comes from the Lord. If you believe that you ought to give God a shout in this place, open your mouth and give God a shout in this place. The only way you can get to your destiny is by watering it with a praise. Faith without works is dead. In order to get to your next level, you got to be willing to sacrifice a little bit. And all God is asking you to open up your mouth and use the fruit of your lips to give God some praise on credit. Like the bills are already paid off before you even see the debt cancellation zero. Who am I preaching to in here today? Somebody ought to get on their feet and give God some praise right there. Come on, Zion. Even when the lights got cut off, I praised them when it came back on. I praised them when it didn't look like I was going to see my way through. I praised them anyhow when it didn't seem like the bills were going to be paid on time. I praised them anyhow. That's just my testimony. But when all hell started to break loose, God did a shift in my life. And when he did a shift in my life, my life went from zero to a hundred when God is in control. When you allow God to have control over your life, you ain't got to worry about day to day how you gonna make it through. You don't have to worry about God is calling us to leadership. God is calling us to leadership positions. And God is coming after somebody that desires leadership. Something about this, something about in this generation, they call, they, they, he, he is calling us to take position in our rightful place. How many of you willing to take your rightful place in the Lord? You have to take authority over the assignment. And you have to establish your position. If you never establish your position, where is your faith? I'm tired of church folk operating in faith, but don't have that relationship. Come on, somebody. You got to establish your place in God's house. If God goes for, before you, that means you got to come along for the ride. God has a place for you. God has a space for you. God has a grace for you. And God has a grace for you. I decree and declare that this is the season you will take your rightful place. Come, it's time now to stop playing church and go for broke. I, 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 I said I would never ever go back to playing church, but when I need something from the Holy Ghost to happen, I get on my knees and I say, our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So give us this day, my God, our daily bread. I ain't got to worry about the next opportunity. All I got to do is put my name on the line. And God said he's on the prayer line. And all you got to do is tell him what you want. All you got to do, Jesus is on the main line. And all you got to do is tell them what you want. The Bible declared that greater is he that is in you, that is he that is in the world. He said no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. If you believe that, give God a shout in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. I decree right now in this season, there's jobs and better jobs. I 
decree in this season that you will have checks in the mail. I decree in this season that you will have bills paid off. I decree and declare in this season you will not, you know the ladder will be greater. I decree in this season you will run and not faint. I decree, I decree, I decree in this season you shall have what you decree. I decree in this season that God is getting ready you to move you to the next dimension and from your next dimension he's getting ready to move you to your next realm in the spirit. If you believe God is going to do something greater in your life, you ought to shout in this place. I like audience participation because God is getting ready. It takes us doing something um, to be able to activate the heavenlies in order to get what God has positioned us in this season. And I want to take the opportunity. Somebody in here is looking for a shift. And they're expecting God to do something in this season. And I want you to stand all over this room because I believe God is saying jobs and better jobs. Higher salaries on top of salaries. I want you to stand all over this place. If you are expecting God to do something in this season, all hell is breaking loose on your job. All demons are taking place. It seems like they, they're hiring their buddy and they're skipping you over. But I'm here to decree and declare that the power of the almighty God, the son of the Holy Ghost, the God that I know, we're going to break every wall, every chain. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every vessel that's standing in here that they will have jobs and better jobs, better paying positions. Opportunities coming out of nowhere. I decree and I write their name in the heavenlies that the next opportunity they ain't even got to apply for it. God, I ask you right now to touch them in the thin crown of their head. I ask you to touch them in their bank accounts. Touch them in their finances, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare opportunities shall flood them like never before. I decree and I declare right now, God, that you will give them opportunities, but they have to make the decision on which job to take or which opportunity to walk through. Every door that was closed, God, you supernaturally open it in the name of Jesus. I call it done in the name of the Father. I call it done in the name of the Son. And I call it done in the name of the Holy Ghost. somebody invited me. I came today because I desire to be here and I desire to have recovery. I want to be a member of Island Chapel. We'll be glad to have you. I'll be honored to be your pastor today. If you just walk out and walk down the aisle right now, as the priest team is singing, we are waiting for you. 
you desire a covenant relationship, you desire to recommit your life to God, you desire to get a covenant Chapel, 
Amen. So, so, so whatever it is that you need to take care of, don't come looking for me. Amen. You can go looking for her. Amen. Amen. We bless God and we honor God for her. Again, a quick reminder, amen, this Tuesday, if you would join the Decimal family as we celebrate her, amen, 93 years of life, amen, of love and laughter, amen, we just praise God and we honor God for her. And then on Friday, we want to remind you about our kickoff prayer service, amen, for our men's day, which will be at 6 o'clock on Friday. If you need any details, you can see Brother Dan Freeman or Brother Christopher Morris, and they'll be glad to share more information with you. Amen. Again, we praise God for all of you, for your presence here, for sharing in worship. We invite you to share with us in our first Sunday of worship and sacrament or next Sunday before we go to the general conference. We praise God and we honor God for you. Won't you stand to your feet today? Amen. As we prepare for our dismissal, praise God for more, more blessings for